Hello, everybody. Welcome to Imagination TV. And we were pumped last night to be able to hang out with our friends over on the continent of Africa and, and run our show live at 5 p.m. We're back at 12 noon today for the Youngsters segment. This week, we're kicking around the idea of knowing yourself. And our co-host today is Ian Clark Ugal. Ian, how are you? How are you feeling about the show today? Oh, good, thank you. And what do you want to learn from, from today's show? What would you like to get out of it? Oh, I'd like to get out of just having fun and just talking to people, I guess. Yeah, we, I think we're going to achieve both those things over the next half an hour. So let's strap ourselves yes. in and, and go for it. Uh, firstly, as we, we get into the show, we're going to catch up with a couple of um, couple of people who took some initiative, which was a theme we were working on last week, and decided to to go about and work out how they could raise some funds to to support the work that we're doing. Now, the the reality of the the current economic situation we look at in Australia and in a number of places around the world is that there is a a bunch of people that miss out on the fair a fair share of wealth and opportunity and a lot of aims work is working with kids who are outside those margins and and peter and henry were both at a um at a school at sydney grammar and decided to to use their platform and 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 the opportunities that they've had to then share some of that power and opportunity with with kids in the aim network so peter and henry tell us a little bit about why you why you did that you know when you were sitting there and working out um were you going to use use some of your opportunities and share that what motivated you guys to want to do that oh sure it was it was definitely just um as at sydney grammar school each year um there are there are 26 prefects selected and and part of part of that that job is thinking of ways that we can help our community and and so that was really just the mindset and what attracted us towards aim and the idea of raising money for this is is just the message of of imagination and encouraging people to think imaginatively because i know i know and i found out especially through last year that people aren't opposed to the idea of giving charitably it's really just people's apathy or not feeling as feeling really inspired to do so so really encouraging people to be imaginative to have empathy um for other people was really um what, what got the show going in that, in that case henry how do how do you imagine yourself into someone else's shoes to have that empathy and then to to talk to people about, I, I found it's one of the hardest things early on with AIM, walking up to someone and saying, will you part with your money so I can take that money and be able to then provide opportunities for someone you've never met before? How did you try and help people see um, that that should be something that they should do? How did, you, how did you work through that? Well, I thought that the AIM message was a really good one to promote because parents obviously are really invested in their own children's education. And if you can show them that them, as you said, parting with their money will really benefit another child's education who doesn't have the same opportunities. I think people are really willing to be generous because they can imagine what it would be like to, to want to get an education, to want to succeed, to want to excel, but not actually have those resources. And so I think that was a really helpful way to, to convince people to get on board with AIM's message. I, um, I was lucky enough to go to Stanford about uh, eight years ago or something and was studying with this guy who now leads Nike's creative design around the world. And he said this thing as we were sitting in this business course talking about how things move and swing. Uh, and he talked about the pendulum and how sometimes things swing one way and swing another way. Now, the reality of the pendulum in Australia is, you know, Indigenous Australians lived with huge richness of life for 60,000 plus years and the pendulum has swung really dramatically over the last 250 years to create significant amount of inequality and I just wanted to um you wanted to acknowledge you guys of saying well let's just try and swing the pendulum back and see if we can find a way to to have this as a more balanced um fairer world so so thank you both for for contributing and trying to, to rebalance that out Oops. And we've got, because of your work, guys, we we're inspired by it and inspired by the initiative. And I believe in young people. I think young people, you know, we've had 5,000 plus uni students volunteer to be a part of AIM. It's the biggest volunteer, university, biggest volunteer movement of university students in Australian history. 
And I've always believed that we have to do this together, that we're not going to create change in isolation. We have to actually, if we want to see a better country, it starts from us working out what we can do individually to create that change, what we can do with our opportunities to bring other people with us. And inspired by Peter and Henry's work, we've launched a CEO for Good program where we're giving the chance for private schools and for one student from a private school to have the chance to be an official CEO for Good with us and work out how to raise funds over the course of a program so it gives us a chance to do what we did last night, which is announce that we're going to go to Zimbabwe um, and we've raised $10,000 so far and a $15,000 Australian would actually pay a person's salary and, uh, to deliver the program in Zimbabwe for us. So being able to share those opportunities and those connections to kids that, that might not um, get those opportunities to go to the schools that, that, that some of our more privileged schools in the country. Molly Jackson's here with us um, from All Saints Anglican School. Molly, you've applied to be a CEO for good. This is, a, this is your interview. Um, why do you want the gig? Um, I feel like a lot of people have been disadvantaged, especially by the current crisis. And I feel like in a lot of private schools, people are sheltered and they don't understand what's almost outside in the real world. And I feel like helping others to give back and to give to the original owners of the land. Like they were here first, they should have the same opportunities that we have. And just helping others to benefit from the money that we earn that we don't all use. Molly, I think it's, um, it's that sort of attitude that's going to allow us to build a country where people don't get left behind. And, and I, I learned when I was at uni, I used to, I, th I thought I'd found the enemy. I was like, Oh, people who are rich, I can just blame people who are rich. And I got pretty angry and it took me time to get over that and to learn that, no, it's not about blaming people. It's about how do we, how do we go and work with where we are and where we can go, not where we've come from. Acknowledge where we've come from, but then really try and build rich bonds together. So we've got Molly's and Ian's performing at a same level and the same stage like we have right here now. So Thank you for applying, Molly, and we'll get back in touch with the school and hopefully give you the chance to be a CEO for good with us and, and then, you know, kickstart this, this pattern where it would be fantastic to have, you know, hundreds of private schools around Australia that are, that are helping support the mentoring of kids all around the planet. That would be a huge statement and a great way for us to lead. So thank you for putting your hand up to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Ian, what do you reckon? Yeah, I agree a lot, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Cool to see people having a crack, eh? Hey? Yeah, it is. No, no, we're not alone. Pretty good stuff. So, uh, all right, we're going to jump into our principal challenge, and we've got uh, our principal Emma Dayo from McClellan College here with us, who's going to take on the sixty-second challenge. Emma Dayo, you had a nice start to the morning today when you welcomed the kids back. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, look, uh, as, as I sort of uh, mentioned, being day one, we thought it was important to sort of um, make the kids feel really welcome because the, the teachers genuinely wanted to see kids back here. They all started back yesterday. Uh, a skeleton crew of staff were here the whole time while kids and teachers were working remotely. But, um, geez, it's, it's a lot nicer today having the year 11s and, and uh, 12s back. And I'm really looking forward to the 9th of June when all of the kids are back because we've got over a 1,000. Uh, kids and 100 staff so when the you know a community of 1100 sort of whittles down to about 11 or 12 for the last six to eight weeks it's a pretty lonely place so I'm personally really happy to uh, have today finally arrived. Yeah awesome there's a guy called S Charles Lee who is an architect uh, in America and down the west coast uh, where LA is and a bunch of the the places where movie cinemas have become so well known around the world. He was an architect of a lot of those major movie cinemas and theatres. And he had a view that the show starts on the sidewalk, that actually when we're looking at a theatre or a cinema, it's when we see the building that we start to have feelings about how that's going to, how we're going to engage with it. And it's really cool to hear you starting the show on the sidewalk this morning and walking out and being like, no, this is where first impressions start and building that. So good on you. Let's get the 60 second challenge ready to rumble. The clock's about to start. Here we go. Uh, what is your greatest fear? Greatest fear? Look, um, it sounds a bit sort of uh, corny and cliche, but, um, yeah, just failure, I guess, because, you know, everyone wants to be successful and especially when you've got a role like this and, and you've got, you know, so many kids and um, I've got four of my own at home. You don't want to be a failure. You want to make sure that you're, you're doing your best so that um, not you, just you but the people that rely upon you succeed. Which talent would you most like to have? Oh, 
uh, I'd love to be able to fly. Um, you know, it's something that stems back from being a, a little kid, I reckon. You know, I love Superman and I just love the idea of, you know, sort of floating above and, and um, yeah. You know. On what occasion do you value rebelliousness? Oh, geez. Uh, um, I think mostly when um, I get Department of Education advice and I sort of, I got a gut feel sometimes that it's not quite right, and it's not that often. But you know, so that's when um, I, the rebel in me sort of comes out, and I do what I feel is right, but try to sort of you know still work within the rules. Yeah, yeah, I love that form of rebellion, which is all right. We'll we'll rebel, but we'll do it together, and we'll try and work out how we navigate yeah. it together. I apologize. Hey, thank you, nothing. thank you for joining us and being a, a partner on on today's episode, and for all the work you do for so many kids. It's a pleasure to work with you. So thanks so much, Amadea. No worries. Thank you. Oh, good. All right. We're going to go catch up with a wizard. I love wizards. Robbie Curtis is here to kick it with us for 180 seconds. Hi, I'm Robbie Curtis. I'm an Australian dancer and acrobat. Watch on to learn how to do some really tricky tricks at home. Bobby, awesome. Ian, what have you got nearby? Let's try and see if we can balance something. So I've got a, I've got a pen. All right, here we go. If you're watching this live in the audience, this is not fake. Yep, that lasted for about a second. What have you got, Ian? Have you got anything you can balance? I'll go find something. All right, we'll see you back in a second. Okay, we're going to move into uh, one of my favourite sections on the show, which is our Presidents of Imagination. So we're pumped to welcome three presidents today to deliver the speeches. We've got some comments that are flying in. Jess Daniels saying, go get him, Ian, deadly hoodie. Uh, Tom Winsley said, well said, Henry. Great. Alexander Jackson said, great perspective, Henry. Lots of love for Peter as well and the team that worked together. So, yeah, lots of really strong sentiments. And Perul saying, that's neat. Love the music too. Sticks and Roses will be balancing on our nose. Keep your comments coming in and let's move into our president's speeches of imagination. But before we do that, Ian, what have you got to balance? A pen. All right, ready, set, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. In the mud. Yes, he did it. Drilled it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> awesome, bros. Good on you. All right, let's go into the presidential speeches. <laughs> the only get our homeless people off the street. I want to see a future where education is free. 
Today, we ask you to imagine what's possible. Okay, Treffy, are you ready to be the president of Imagination? Yeah, I am. Awesome. Well, let's give the stage to you, ladies and gentlemen, everybody around the world. Welcome Treffy Grant as our president of Imagination. Thanks. People of Imagination, it is with a great honour that I get to lead you as president. Today, I want to share an important message about knowing yourself. Knowing yourself is about knowing your limits and knowing what you like and dislike in life. Another way of knowing yourself is knowing what you can and can't handle. Knowing yourself is about being comfortable with who you are. When you get to know yourself, you get to explore everything about your being and your existence in the nation of imagination. So as president of imagination, I must I have passed the laws that everyone must find out what makes them go. And when you do, um, find out, act upon it every day so you become finer versions of yourself. And thank you to the people of imagination for entrusting me with this honour to lead you. And we look forward to our nation getting to know themselves. Thanks for listening. It's a trippy grand signing off. Awesome. Ian, have you got a question for our former president, Treffy Grant? It's a, it's a short stint, but a powerful stint. You did great, Treffy. Ian, have you got anything you'd like to know? Yeah, um, that was good speech. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, you did great. Yes, you did. And lots of love coming from the chat line as well, Treffy. Hey, how do you feel on the other side of delivering that speech? Um, I, was, I was nervous, but um, it was good. Yeah, you spoke really well. I love that idea of like knowing what makes you go or what makes you just move. And and if we, it'd be cool if a law was passed every day where we had to take some time to just go inside of ourselves and be like, all right, this is me time. It's really cool. So thank you for joining us and being a part of it. I think you're going to be back for failure time with us in just a moment. So good on you. And we've got Talara Fitler with at Oak Flats High from Oak Flats High is with us today. So Talara, are you there? Yeah. You ready to be the president? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Everybody in imagination, let's welcome our inauguration presidential speech from Talara Fitler. Go get them. Hello, Imagination TV. My name is Talara Fitler from Oak Flats High School, and I'm very grateful to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you today. I would like to share an important message about knowing yourself. Knowing yourself to me means understanding your strengths and weaknesses, your passions and fears, your desires and dreams. Knowing your likes and dislikes and your tolerances and limitations. Knowing yourself means knowing you. Knowing you can be a very important thing. For instance, how you treat others is a reflection of who you are as a person. Knowing who you are helps you realise the value you have in yourself and the society. You realise that you are worth so much and you can make a good contrib contribution to the world. Knowing yourself is much more than just you. Knowing yourself gives others an insight of your likes, dislikes and even dreams. That's where AIM mentoring can come into this category. AIM mentoring can guide you to success and inspire you to follow your dreams. It's amazing. As your prime minister for today, I'd like to say this. Knowing yourself and figuring yourself out can be a little scary, but there's always someone that can help, help you and be there for you. You are not in this alone. Thank you for your time and thank you, Imagination TV, for this opportunity. Yeah, crowd goes wild. It's hard when there's not a crowd, so I'm trying my best to shoo, 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 shoo. Ian's throwing some double thumbs up and pumping you up. Hey, um, I love that idea in there about limitations. I reckon one of those, it's that's one of the tough lessons to work out is what's your limits? Um, and there might be some spaces where you don't want to go, some things you really dislike and and some things you don't get energy from, and other things that you really get energy from. And I just love the way you describe that. So thanks. That's a real gift for me to take yes, into my Thank life. you. Really cool. And then in terms of the aim pump, pump up, look, we just provide a structure. You guys do all the work. Like we, we turn up and, and give you the stage, but you're you're leading and creating the change. So I'd say that you guys are amazing. That's the amazing part. And we're just doing our bit to, Thank you. to build it up. Um, Ian, what do you reckon? There's some love coming in from the chat line. We've got Jasmine Cunningham saying, uh, <laughs> guys, go Warrnambool kids. Uh, great job, Clark. You're really proud of you, mate. How are you feeling yeah. so far? Oh, this is just so fun and I love being on the show. It's just good experience, I guess. Yeah, awesome. Love talking to these guys, I guess. 
Well, I'm, I'm having a good time too. I'm loving it as well. You're, yeah. you're, you're bringing you're, the love you're bringing. I'm feeling the love, bros. We're, we're doing good. All right, we've got yeah. our, um, our final presidential speech and we've got Zach Haddock with us. So lots of props to Talara for being brilliant in that moment and doing really well. And Zach, how are you going? Are you ready to rumble? I am ready to rumble. Um, good news. Well, I've just got Helen saying move over, Jack. I think that uh, Helen Wiseman in the comments line, who's one of our board directors, who's... Um, and telling me to move to the side. I'm doing my best to try and do it, Helen. So hopefully Ian's ready to rumble soon and we can start to pass on the stage. And actually from next week, I'm not going to be co-hosting anymore. So Helen, I'm taking on your advice. Uh, all right, gang, let's keep moving through. Zach, how are you? I am completely ready and very okay. excited. Awesome. Okay, well, everybody around the world, let's welcome Zach Haddock as our president of Imagination. Fellow viewers of Imagination TV, it is with great joy that I, your supreme ruler and your president, may deliver a speech in hopes to embolden you, all my loyal subjects, into becoming better and more powerful citizens of my esteemed cultural community of tea drinkers and chalky bicky eaters. As you know, knowing yourself is a very powerful tool in the fight against coffee drinkers of the world. Those who believe that dirty bean water is superior to the amazing aroma and sheer power of tea. The lifeblood of all the world's wonders. Knowledge is power, my friends, and the best knowledge is of yourself. Understanding who you are is the first step in many towards the path of power and of tea. As knowing yourself, your limitations and your aspirations will allow your life to be better understood and in turn will allow clever thinking and better judgment calls in your life. Take my good chap Bob here. Bob has spent most of his life as a complete cabbage head. Indeed, my lord. But upon self-reflection and taking the time to better understand himself, he has now understood why he is a cabbage head. Yes, my lord. After some understanding, Bob has realized that stealing from the royal chalky bicky tin is not something he is good at, as well as something that can be unbeneficial for his long-term survival. Thank you, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, in the world of Imagination TV, we must all pride ourselves on knowing each other and ourselves. As only when we know ourselves can we walk through life tall and strong, and to know that we want to live our lives to the fullest without the threat of royal chalky bicky theft looming over our head. As supreme ruler and president of Imagination TV, I wish for all of you to aspire to know yourselves better and to walk tall in life. I know we are all strong and that we will live our lives fully with the power of self-knowledge. I reflect every day upon my presidency and as a result, I have reign over this esteemed nation and I implore you to do the same. Raz, that was brave as, that was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> when, when we wander through imagination, when we get to open those doors and keep going as you did there and just to keep pushing it, it's so cool. It's so interesting. And it, and it's sort of like dangerous and fascinating and just cool. Like uh, your supreme ruler. Oh my gosh. That was just too funny. And what was his, what was the old mate's name? Bob? Or? Yeah, Bob. Didn't That's Bob do mine. good? Oh yeah. Bob's my amazing. Ruler. Yes. <laughs> what do you think, Ian? That was pretty good. I was cabbage heads. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I so definitely fun. want to and then, make it funny. And, it, and, it, and it's uh, like we've always, when we were sketching really early, some ideas about AIM, I always thought that if you're, you're learning while laughing, um, you have a better chance of engaging with the idea. So I just thought that was really cool how you had us laughing and then there's just an uppercut about being brave and coming together and, and that really makes the message stick. So really cool storytelling. Thank you for using imagination and taking us off to a more imaginative place than we've been so far. And now there's a new benchmark set and hopefully the, the next crew are going to start heading off into some wacky, wonderful worlds we haven't heard of before. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about letting your supreme leadership go? That's one of the bigger challenges throughout human history has been just moving supreme leaders to the side. Are you, are you okay? Honestly, mate, I've had a long, tough think about it. And I think that the mantle of chalky Becky ruler um, just isn't for me. Um, but I hope that whoever can take on the mantle is responsible and can definitely tell the difference between coffee and tea. Yeah, yeah I, I really wholeheartedly agree. Thanks, Zach. You've been fantastic. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go write a feature film about imagination. We'll throw it a quick video. We'll be back in a second.
most of us love the story of the child who is sidelined by life because of the situation they were born into or the color of their skin, and then one day becomes a champion or a success or a hero. This is the kind of story we hope will inspire marginalized kids to dream big and make their dream come true. But what if we did it differently? How are we gonna do that? Flipping the script is about not letting the hand you've been dealt stop you from achieving your goals. Imagine realizing that you can actually flip the script that's been given to you and start writing your own story. We have to challenge the norm. So what if we ask the kids we don't usually hear from, the ones who are sidelined by life, to be our storytellers? The project Imagine gives us all the power to flip the script. We invite all of you, all humans everywhere, to join us in a live experiment. The time for talk been over. It's time for some action. And there is genuinely no limit to what you can achieve. There is no limit to any imaginative juices. Use that kind of like just around the corner idea so you can bring in technology and ideas or, or, or social constructs that don't exist and bring them into this world. Let's write the next chapter of human history collectively. Imagine the wealth of stories and ideas just waiting to come into the world. Imagine the new horizons if we flip the script. Welcome to the Imagine Film Project. Okay, we've got a very special failure time today. So over the last four weeks, we've, we've launched a feature film. We put a Google Doc live and we said to people out there, let's write this thing together with the headline Imagine and let's see if we can make a film together. So we've had some of Australia and some of the world's uh, top film writers and directors and actors join us on the show and they've contributed to many writers rooms. We've had a bunch of uh, kids come together and have the chance to write as well as part of our failure time. And this week is the last week of writing on the show before we then put the script into the hands of... Um, of a couple of writing pros to sort of polish it off and then we're going to move into the creator stage and work with filmmakers around the world over the next six months to, to build this this co-created feature film called Imagine. So today our writing team is, we've got Zach is back, uh, so Zach good to have you and we've got Ian is with us as well, so Ian looking forward to you jumping into this part. We've got Miji and Naima, are you there? Cool, do you want to say hello quickly? Hi, hello. Hello. Let's let's tell some imaginative stories. And we got Talara who's gonna be jumping in. Talara, how are you? Come on. Good. Awesome. And Treffy, we're gonna we're gonna get you jumping back in as well. Okay, here's the story. So this is this is the base so far. We've got a 15-year-old um, kid whose name is Kim. Now Kim is uh, gender fluid. They have a very, very messy room. So they have a very messy bedroom. Has anyone got a messy bedroom? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Good. Oh, yeah. That's, that's definitely. Uh, so Kim's got a very messy bedroom. There's more mess than you could ever imagine in the messiest of bedrooms. Kim sits on, on their bed to go to sleep and a claw comes out from the bed and pulls them down and pulls them into a place where they then wake up and they're on a tiny boat, Ian. They're on this small little boat in a big ocean and there's six islands. Now, Kim, okay. Kim is a bully. So Kim has spent their life being a bully, and that's their secret. Kim is joined in the boat by an alien dog named Jeff. Jeff is from the future, and it's a sort of like tech, wacky future world, but it's all, and it's all pastel colours. It's not your sort of normal tech, like hydro world, <laughs> or pastel colours. So we've got Jeff the dog, the alien dog, and we've got Kim there in a boat. The six islands are the places that they're journeying on for Kim to face their journey as a bully and to come face to face with it and try and understand it and maybe even overcome it by the end. So on the first island, Kim goes and sees someone bullying and it ends up being the person that is bullying the kid. That kid is Kim's dad. So there's some backstories going on where Kim's dad was a bully who used to steal burger rings. I'm not sure if you guys have ever eaten burger rings or onion rings for our international viewers. Uh, so there's, there's some of that moving on. The other part that's happening in the story is the ocean is a musical. So every time we go down in the ocean, there's a big uh, anthem that's played by some sort of world of the fish. So that's where we're at. We've got about five minutes to try and write and add into it. I was thinking today we might jump into Act 2, Scene 6, which is in the ocean. So maybe if you can give me a sense of 
who would be in the ocean? Why are they in there? And what song are they singing? And maybe we can try and write a song together. So I'm happy to take any offers to get us going. There should definitely be a talking crab. Talking crab. What's the crab's name? Um, I'm going to call him Cooper. Cooper. What is Cooper, what, what, the what talking color crab. Is, what color is Cooper? Um, why not green? Yeah, okay, exactly. Why not green? Talking crab man, Cooper. Cooper is green. All right. There's Cooper. Who else is in our in our in our song world in the ocean? A seahorse. Seahorse, yeah, I love that. Who said that? Midgey. Yeah, Midgey. We've got a seahorse. What what what's the seahorse's name? Um, what's your name? Um Diana. <laughs> Diana, yeah. What colour is Diana? Pink, yeah, perfect. Pastel pink, is that all right? Yes. Yes, yeah, sick. Um, all right, what else we got? An octopus. Yeah, octopus, love that. Maybe this octopus is a little bit different to usual. What makes this octopus octopus different, you think? It plays more than one instrument. Yeah, love it. What are the instruments the octopus plays, Anne? I don't know, like... The rattly ones. Yeah, rattly ones. And maybe we haven't seen them before. Just rattling yeah. instruments. Just mad instrumentalist. Like he um, recycled the stuff off the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Polluted. Yes, pollution story. We're, we're, we're bringing the plastic from the floor and, and the octopus is playing just mad instrumental backing tracks for us. Love that. Like Coke bottles, etc. Um, all right, we got two more people in our band, two more mm. characters. What about a whale? Yeah, what's the whale's name? Um, Humphrey. Yeah, I love Humphrey. What a lovely, what a lovely character Humphrey is. What's is Humphrey? Sad, happy, fast, slow? Um, Humphrey is very happy, but he goes very slow. Yeah, sometimes those that go slow are often happier. Um, has Humphrey got anything like unique about Humphrey? The, that makes Humphrey stand out as a whale? Um, Humphrey, Humphrey's um, a, like a green colour, but when he's sad, he turns blue. Yeah. All right, cool. And we need one more and then we're going to write a quick song. One more character. Why not a shark? Yeah, shark's good. Yeah. What's our shark's name? Um, he's going to be named... Huh. Anyone else got an idea? You want to jump in? What's our shark's yeah, name? With names. Bruce. Bruce, yeah. Bruce, Bruce a shark. <laughs> that was the shark on the what is what is a shark? Maybe our shark doesn't have teeth or something. Maybe there's something like it's never been able to. It's just a gummy shark. Well, I was thinking maybe Bruce could be a robot shark and his instrument is a percussion fart. Percussion fart. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, love it. Okay, cool. Um, we've got, we're ready to go. We've got our talking crab, Cooper. We've got Diana, our pink pastel, hang on a second, um, seahorse. We've got our octopus. Do we have a name for our Sorry. octopus? Um, Squiddy. Squiddy? No, um, Squidward. Squidward. Squ can you spell that for me? I, I don't know. Squigwood. Squig squig that's all right. Squig I like got it. I reckon that's great. Okay, we've got Squigwood, plays more than one instrument. We've got Whale named Humphrey. We've got Bruce the Shark. Um, okay, let's just make a song now. So just just start with the first start of the song. Let's let's give me some words. Hmm. I feel like Cooper should be saying under the sea. Yeah, under the sea okay what's next the, the ocean of music the ocean of music will be yep we need a reason for the song as well maybe are they trying to move jeff the dog are they trying to teach kim something let's let's carry that thought as we're moving forward <laughs> maybe they could try to like teach kim about pollution and stuff because yeah. you never realized that before yeah because kim maybe kim threw a bottle over and that was the connection so maybe the scene is yeah kim, kim threw throws a bottle over the boat um and 
Squigwood catches it. Hmm. And, the, and the anthem begins. Under the sea, the ocean of music has been polluted. I mean, just give me some sentences. Just say anything. Um, <laughs> under the sea where things are recycled? Yep. Yeah, what else? This is the place to be. Yeah. Any sentences, any words, we'll just drop them all in and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Why do we want to recycle? It's good for the environment. Yeah. It makes the water clear. Yeah. How do we recycle? Uh, use a like use a bottle more than one time. Yeah. And then it can go into like some mad percussion. Yeah, one time, one time. Bada, 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 bada. <laughs> hmm. And then what about like just uh, five words? So in any order, don't have to have any intro, any any connection to anything. Just give me five words and, and we'll have that to finish the song off. Whatever words come to your brain straight away. Water. Water, yeah. What else? Wet. Palm Sand. tree. Wet palm tree, yep. What else? Rock, seaweed. Rock, seaweed, paper. Yep. I think that's it. I think we've got ourselves a song. So it's something like under the sea where things are recycled. This is the place. It's good for the environment. Makes the water clear. Use a bottle more one time. Water, wet palm tree, rock, seaweed, paper, the ocean music pollution with the big orchestra and stuff, you know. Well done, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Fade Time. Thanks for using your imagination. You've been awesome. Good on you all. Yeah. Well, well, well done. And so that film, if you want to add any stories to it or add some writing to it and chuck your names there uh, and you can have your chance to have an official credit on a feature film as we build it out. So feel free to jump into that link. It's going to be open until the end of this week and anyone in the audience wants to uh, add it up, that'll be brilliant as well. Okay, we're almost towards the end of the show. Ian, have you had a good time? Well, yeah. We've been bouncing around, bouncing around a lot. Katika and our live audience today how have you been going how's this been to, to sit in on yeah it's been awesome lots of moving pieces hey <laughs> thanks for joining us thanks for being part of it lots of love coming in from the chat line marcus bishop saying supreme ruler will protect our tea chalky bickies and burger rings kiara atkinson saying zach definitely embodies that yes and attitude um and lots of love coming in as well but marley aboriginal artist co-op said we need an octopus with 20 arms so feel free to add that in there okay we're going to go and catch up with um with a youngster named cameron niamuda who is going to give us uh, his diary entry to being brave in the times of COVID 19 so we're recording these each week and at the end of when we come out of COVID 19 we'll turn it into a small book sharing stories of young people from around the world who have come together and, and shared messages of being brave in COVID 19 and here's cameron Hi guys, my name is Cameron and I'm 16 years old. I live in Harare in Zimbabwe and today I'm going to be sharing my experiences with you of how I've been coping during this busy quarantine period. So firstly, I've been keeping close contact with my friends. I've been asking what they're doing and how they're doing and it's a nice feeling because you know they care about you. Next, I have meditation. Meditation is great because it keeps your mind at peace and calm and it distracts you from all what's going on around you. Third is reading and studying. I've re been reading a lot of books and I've been learning a lot of vocab from doing so. And I've also been studying and I've been doing online lessons as I'm an O-level candidate. And it's not the fun, funnest of things to do, but it does distract me from what's going around me. Next, I have exercise. I've been exercising a lot this holiday. I've been playing football by myself. I've been going around the neighborhood for runs and it's just a really great way at keep, keeping me happy and distracting me from what's going around me. And it also keeps my body healthy. Sixth, I've got video games. Video games are a huge addiction. However, they also distract you very quickly from what's going around around you. 
and I love video games. I love FIFA. I play FIFA Ultimate Team nearly every day and I just can't stop playing it. It's just such a great game. I'm just so happy it's there. And yeah, that's, that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed hearing my experiences during this quarantine period of what I've been doing. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Cheers. Thank you, Cameron, for, for sharing how you've been navigating these times and, and using your bravery and for being brave enough to share your words with us. And I think that might be the co-theme for today alongside Know Yourself has been bravery. And I just wanted to acknowledge everyone that's been on the show so far, to Katika, who's in the live audience, to Amadeo Ferrer from McClellan College, our partner school for today, who was brilliant in the 60 second challenge, to Peter and Henry for saying, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do something to create some change. And for them doing that work with Sydney Grammar School, and then Molly Jackson potentially being one of our first group of CEO for Goods for joining us today and, and standing up to say, I want to see things change. Uh, to Robbie Curtis, our wizard, to Treffy, to Talara, to Zach as our president, and then to Miji and Neymar and Treffy and Talara and Ian and Zach for all jumping into that, that writing experience and, and then to Cameron who's just been a part of the show. So thanks to everybody for being a part of this. Ian, did you have yourself a, a, an okay time? Oh, yeah, this was just great. Good experience, I guess. What did you learn? Well, it's not just me struggling during this COVID-19 thing. It's I'm happy to hear that other people are coping just as well as me. I guess they're saying safe and that's all I need to know. And I hope they're good. Nice, bros. Well, you did great today. Thank you for being brave and, and throwing yourself in there. How do you feel at the end of it now? Hyped and just happy. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. Good on you, cuz. Well, we're going to wrap up this show today throwing to our artist of the week, which is Itika Yakala, who we worked with to create the, the hoodie uh, for 2019. If you want to grab a name hoodie and you're feeling a bit cold, head to amentoring.com. That'll help us do the show and keep doing this work around the world as we look to bring mentors into kids' lives every single day. So we'll throw to Itika and I'll catch you all tomorrow for our Wednesday designer segment where we have Malcolm Turnbull, the former prime minister, joining us. We also have Nelson Mandela's granddaughter joining us and a few other people to start to really bring this week home. So tune in tomorrow at 12 noon Australian Eastern Standard Time as we keep working together on Imagination TV to imagine what's possible and over to Itika to finish us up. Hi, my name is Itika Sanderson Bromley. I am a proud Abnamatna, Naranga and Yaliandi woman. And I'm an artist that is a part of a collective called Marco Weary Weary. Um, so this collective consists of myself, my two brothers, um, and some of my nanas and other family members as well. My main three mediums of art are acrylics on canvas, silk paintings, and ceramics. Um, but I also enjoy doing paintings on denim clothing like this. Um, on jackets, skirts, shorts, a whole range of stuff. And I do a bit of mixed media, which is where I um, take photos of country and paint the stories of that particular place onto the photo. So this is one of my canvases. This is about a place in the Flinders Ranges called Hookana Springs. Um, and it's quite an important place to me and quite significant. So, as with all of my paintings and art, I wanted to make sure that I put a lot of effort, a lot of time and a lot of heart into doing this one. Um, my other medium, silk. So this is a silk painting that was stretched onto a frame. Um, so down the bottom we have myself in the middle and my elder brother and my younger brother my parents, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents. So this is my family tree. Um, in the background, it's quite blended into the background um, and quite subtle, so you may not be able to see it, but there's also a whole um, heap of shapes that represent people um, who are my ancestors that are still traveling with me and still guiding me through my life. Another medium is the ceramics. 
Um, so this is one of my ceramic paintings on a plate. Uh, this one is about a meeting place, a quite significant meeting place in the Flinders Ranges. So in the middle is the meeting place. Um, and of course this represents everyone coming from across South Australia um, to meet together on Adnamatna country. Another one is this one. So this is about the Akura, the big snake um, that's in our creation stories. Um, and it has the mountain ranges across the top and the bottom that represent all of the mountains in the Flinders Ranges. Uh, other ones are these ones. So little bowls with the Nunga flag in it. Lots of fun. And something else you can also do with the silks is create bags and purses like these. So we've got little purses that range in sizes and bags as well that range in sizes. So that's a bit about me and my art. Thank you.